Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischl. This is going to be episode 157 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play my 1-3 meetup game at Orange City Racing and Card Club. If you're ever unable to make one of these meetup games, I play every Monday at about 6 p.m. on Club GG on stream. Feel free to stop by, ask me questions, we can chat, even jump into the mix. Well, that's a good one. Go a little over half pot. Well, we're calling that, so it is what it is. Hopefully we can run it multiple times. Do have a spade blocker. He said no, no spade, no spade, no spade. Whoo! Oh, he called the he called the one time. Happy that one held. Jeez, that would have been would have been gross if he calls for the one time and just binks it. Ugh. Now let's roll the tape. So we arrive at Orange City Racing and Car Club for the 1-3 meetup game of July, looking to have a good day. On the first hand of note, early position makes it $15. There's one caller. I call in the cutoff with 8-9 off suit. And the small blind calls, we end up going four ways to queen 7-6 with two diamonds. When we flop open-ended, we're really not going anywhere. The pre-flop aggressor continues for $35, about half pot. Price seems reasonable to continue for me, so that's what I do. The small blind continues as well, so we're going three ways to a turn card, which is the king of spades. Now there's two flush draws on board, and the preflop aggressor checks to me. This is a spot where I think it's really good to go for a bluff. If my opponent had like ace, queen, queen, jack, it's kind of hard to continue when an overcard hits. Additionally, some flush draws might give up to a larger size wager here. So I go relatively big. I bet $100. When called, I can bank on my open ender game there. Otherwise, possibly throw out a bluff attempt at the river if a diamond draw misses. The small blind continues for $100, and the preflop and flop aggressor folds. So we're going heads up to a river card, which is the deuce of diamonds. I think if my opponent had a queen X hand, he should have folded the turn. So I think he's relegated more towards flush draws that got there, or possibly like, you know, king X that floated and then made a top pair. So not really thinking I'm going to get my opponent off those hands. I decide to check this back when check to wave the white flag. He had ace queen offsuit with the ace of diamonds so he did call the turn card with just a pair of queens a little dicey i'd say and i'd say with the queen of diamond blockers it's going to be hard to fold the river on this one so we start off on the wrong side of things on this one following that i button straddle to ten dollars look down at six five of clubs with two limps a middle player makes it 37 fun little one three sizing there I call with suited connectors, think it's going to go multi-way, think my hand plays fine multi-way, and it is confirmed when the small blind decides to call, but the big blind decides to fold. So we are going three ways to a flop, which comes ace, nine, eight with two clubs. We flop a gut shot straight flush, seven of clubs would give us a thousand dollar high hand on this day, be great, but on this hand, it checks all the way to me. Now, I have a ton of equity and zero showdown value, so I think this is a premium spot for a bet. I choose a sizing of $75. Hopefully, players could just give me credit for an ace, let their hands go, make this a very easy hand. But not going to be the case this time. The small blind decides to continue, and the preflop aggressor folds. So we're heads up to a turn card, which is the five of spades. Gives me some shutdown value. I beat like king queen of clubs, king jack of clubs, you know, jack ten, things like that. So getting some shutdown value, still having a gut shot, still having a flush draw, having a pair. Another five or six should give me the best hand against an ace all the time. I decided to check this back, try to realize some equity. The river is the king of diamonds. Kind of a bad card if my opponent had king x of clubs. He's probably not folding when he rivers some shut on value himself. When it checks to me, I decide to check it back. And my opponent has ace jack of spades. So couldn't hit any of my plethora of outs on this one. Still trending in the wrong direction. Next hand of note. There is a button straddle. I looked down at pocket jacks in middle position. I raised to $30. It is a $10 button straddle. 3x the open seems reasonable. The button is the only caller and the flop is ace, nine, six. Two hearts. Having the jack of hearts is pretty good here. I think I'm just going to continue betting here. I have the best aces in range. My opponent shouldn't have too many of them. So I can do for $30, half pot size bet. Things reasonable. My opponent makes the call. When the turn is the four of spades, brings backdoor spades, 
I have the heart and spade part of pocket jack, so double blocking both of them, I think I need to protect against some of these flush draws. Additionally, my opponent might fold like ace-8, ace-5. Some of the weaker aces that call the flop probably can't hang on on the turn, so we're going to go for a second street of value slash protection against flush draws. I bet $80. My opponent makes the call a second time, so we are still heads up to a river card, which is the Nine of Clubs. Very safe card, all things considered. All flush draws missed. I really doubt my opponent can call two streets with a nine, so I think my hand functions best as a check call. My opponent may turn miss hearts or miss spades into a bluff, to which I'm just going to pick off, and betting an ace here would be somewhat thin, so I don't really expect him to value bet a better hand. When I check it to my opponent, he pretty quickly checks it back. That seems like good news. I show pocket jacks and he mucks saying he missed. So finally pick one up here at the meetup game. Following that, the wheels have come off because with one limp, I looked on the old queen seven of diamonds and raised to $15. Play a lot of hands at these meetup games. Try to mix it up. Play with the fans with as many people as possible. So queen seven suited is definitely going to be a play for me. To this bet, the button, the big blind, and the limper call. So we go four ways to jack eight, eight, two diamonds. Flopping a queen eye flush draw seems pretty good. Similarly, when I have, you know, big pocket pairs, I bet half pot. When I have flush draws, I bet half pot. Seems pretty balanced. So when I bet $30, the button and a early push player call. So we end up going three ways to a turn card where we bink the flush immediately. Three of diamonds. On this card, I think it's best to bet somewhat small here a second time. The obvious draw comes in and I actually have it. If I had an eight, if I had ace jack, with like the ace of diamonds, I'd probably bet small here, try to get closer to showing a value while keeping the betting lead. So we're going to bet somewhat small when we have a made flush as well. Additionally, we want our opponent to continue with hands like 9-10, queen-10, you know, straight draws that are technically drawing dead, and some weak jacks. So $50 will be the wager from me. Try to squeak out some extra value from very weak holdings with very little equity or chance to win. The button is the only color of this $50, and the river is a devastating four of diamonds. Motherfucker! So, now four to the flush out there. Not really what I'm looking for. I don't really see my opponent calling a river bet here without a better hand. So, I check it to my opponent. He throws out a bet of $75. Very small. I think an eight would do the same thing. Maybe like jack 10, 10 of diamonds. So, I don't think we could fold for just $75 given the price we're getting. And he has the old ace nine offsuit with the ace of diamonds. I gotta say, I could have called this one. Seems like a quite loose call on the flop there, but he goes runner runner and good for that guy, I guess. Next hand of note. Finally looking down at a first premium pocket aces. I make it $15 when folded to me. Only the cutoff decides to call, so we're going heads up to a flop of bink ace eight five two diamonds. Having so much of the board locked up, I think I have to check to my opponent, give him a chance to stab, bluff, slash, catch up so that I can make some money in this hand. When I check, he bets $15. Well, if he has a flush draw, he's not folding to a raise, so I think I can raise this one pretty happily. Going for the old check min raise to $30. If the board paired, it'd be a fantastic result. Otherwise, hopefully we can fade a diamond. My opponent calls the 15 additional dollars, and we will never fade a draw that we are trying to. The turn is the deuce of diamonds. Of course it is. I checked to my opponent a second time. He bets $50. And now we're going to go for a very interesting double check raise. You really don't see it all too often, but I can still get value from weaker two pairs. Maybe a straight would fold to this. Maybe ace eight will just get it in with me and be behind. Additionally, maybe my opponent has like ace jack, jack of diamonds, and... We'll put more money in there, drawing extremely thin. So I check raise a second time to $150. This is too much. My opponent folds, and it's a meetup game. It's friendly. I decide to show, and the double check raise is going to be good on this one. We are in for our second bullet because the first few hands were quite expensive going the other direction, but trying to claw back. We switch tables as we switch tables often in these meetup games. Try to play with as many fans as possible that come out to play with me. Now on this hand with one limp, middle position makes it 20, late position calls, big blind calls, and a limper calls. I'm in the big blind with king queen off suit. We end up going four ways to queen eight, three, two diamonds. I have no diamonds, king of spades, queen of clubs, but still top pair good kicker seems very good. It checks the preflop aggressor who bets half pot, $40. Seems reasonable with top pair good kicker to just make the call here. Raising would seem like a little bit of an overplay, so it's what I choose to do. Everyone else folds, so we're going heads up to a turn card. 
which is the five of spades. Shouldn't change too much. On this card, my opponent bets $65. Well, still can't fold here. I beat queen jack, queen 10, maybe pocket jacks, pocket 10 getting a little sticky. Ace, ace king of diamonds, ace jack of spades, all hands that could double barrel that I am beating pretty handily. So I make the call a second time. The river is the nine of spades. When I checked my opponent, he bets $75. I really don't know how many hands can go for three streets here. And with my exact holding of unblocking all the diamonds and blocking the made spades, I think it's very hard for my opponent to have a hand that's better than me here. If he had like ace, queen, or an overpair, he probably would check back this river when a flush gets there. Plenty of two pairs. Some straight draws like jack 10 get there, so... I don't know, this one seems a little too thin to go for value at one pair, so I flick in the call. But he did have one pair. Pair of aces... will be good on this one and king queen is not going to be having the ace of spades i guess makes this river bet a lot easier but not good for me next hand of note we start the filming on the flop because when early position made it 15 dollars two late position players call the button call i'm in the small blind with ace deuce of hearts i complete as well so 75 bucks in the middle five ways to ace four deuce two clubs Flopping two pair seems amazing. I check as I don't have the betting lead. Preflop progressor bets 35. There goes one call, two call. I think I have to announce my hand right now. I could be against plenty of ace tens, ace kings. Aces that are just not going to fold, as well as club draws. Maybe five, six of clubs. And all kinds of stuff I need to get value from. So I raised to $135. Trying to get close to getting stacks in as possible. When the preflop aggressor and flop aggressor continues to make the call... A later position player now back jams all in. Ugh. When it folds back to me, I only have like $300 left to, behind after my 135 The pot's pretty massive. I have two pair. Can't really fold, especially when there's club draws out there and the ace is not the club. My opponent could easily have like ace 10 of clubs, ace 5 of clubs, to which I'm ahead of. Not by a whole lot, but definitely I would have the best hand at this point. So we are getting it in with two pair here. When the preflop and flop aggressor finally decides to fold, my opponent decides to run it out twice with me. Seems like good news. Usually when that happens, they are on a draw. On the first board, king of spades, three of clubs. All fives make straight. All clubs get there. That's pretty horrendous. And on the second board, goes five, eight. Ace five beats me on both boards. Pretty horrible result. But none of that seems to matter because my opponent finally flips over pocket fours for a flopped set. I'm going to throw up. I think I'm going to throw Don't up. Don't throw up. Nice Slight slow roll as he's probably guaranteed to have the best hand at this point, but nice hand to that guy. After that, we're trying to get back. Under the gun makes it $15. I have king queen offsuit for the second time. I'm in middle position. I make the call for $15 button calls. We end up going three ways to a flop of queen, five, three, two diamonds. We do have the queen of diamonds for a Diamond blocker seems pretty good. Top pair good kicker. Also a pretty good sight. Preflop aggressor bets $30. I have no other choice besides just calling here. Top pair good kicker. Blocking the flush draws. Feels good. When the turn is the four of clubs and we're heads up, my opponent continues for $60. Same story. Hopefully I beat a queen jack, queen 10, something like that. I make the call. And the river is the eight of diamonds. So diamonds come through again, because every time I'm trying to fade a draw, it gets there. But since I block it, I'm not really too worried about my opponent having a made flush. But apparently they're not worried about me having a flush either, as they jam for $109. For just 100 into a pot that's over 300, I, I think I just have to call this one again. So I decide to make the call, and this time my opponent does not have pocket aces. Pocket kings is the hand I run into this time. With the King of Diamonds again, so they also have the card that kind of gives them the ability to throw the third barrel in. Disappointing for me. Next hand of note. At Orange City, we have a Texas Hold'em double board bomb pot, so only two cards in your holding. Mine is the 10-7 of spades. When eight players put $10 into the middle, the first flop is Ace-7-5 with two diamonds. Second flop is King-10-Deuce with two hearts. Hard to have a pair on both boards. When you only have two cards in your hand, a pair is likely going to win at least one of the boards. So I'm going to bet this one, thin the field. Having a piece on both seems good enough to bet. I bet $30. 
two different players call so we're going three ways to a turn card which on top is the four of spades on bottom is the ten of diamonds i would have slowed down but i make a flush draw on top and make trips on bottom so definitely not shying away from this one anymore but i don't even get the chance to bet as an early position player leads for 100 and the player to my direct right then jams well have a flush draw which should be good if it finishes and have three tens so i mean i shouldn't lose both boards right i put all my money in the player who made it 100 is thinking for quite a long time they eventually decide to fold and while they're thinking i just look at the board and saying wow i could actually get scooped if my opponent has ace 10 but apart from that i should be relatively good and that is somewhat confirmed when, when my opponent shows the 10-5 so my kicker will play on bottom so far and my pair of sevens is better on top and both rivers are actually seven seven of clubs on bottom seven of clubs on top seven of hearts on bottom we make a trips on top and a full house on bottom we get a full double up and then some finally win a decent hand at this one and as you see i'm putting my chips in my rack because it is actually time for the table change again we change after the bomb pots so sorry for that player that i had to switch tables right after this but i do come back very shortly next hand of note when the cutoff limps i'm in the small blind with pocket eights i make it 15 dollars. the big blind calls and the cutoff calls as well so we are going three ways to a flop of bink ace nine eight two clubs we flop a set but for some reason i decided to check i guess trying to gather some information see if my opponent have an ace have a flush draw as i've been running kind of bad try to pot control slightly until i have a better understanding of where i'm at in the hand when i check it checks to the cutoff who bets 30 dollars gonna call one street hopefully no club hits the turn then i can pile some money in there when i call the big blind calls as well so three ways to a turn card which is the six of spades not my favorite i mean 10 7 is available but should be discounted a decent percentage of the time when i check big blind checks and the cutoff continues for 75 dollars think he's heavily weighted towards ace x hands or possibly some flush draws but either way we are putting a raise in right now gotta protect our three of a kind should be the best hand should be able to get stacks in on many safe river cards so i raised to 225 dollars the big blind folds pretty quickly and after a bit of thinking the cutoff decides to make the call will this be the one time i get a safe river card well think about the worst card in the deck for a second and you're right the river is the seven of clubs puts a four liner puts a flush puts everything when i ch check my opponent snap jams and this opponent had actually jammed several times across the sessions showed down air showed down complete nothing he had been drinking plenty of adult beverages and having a very fun time let's say so if there's ever a time to call down with this hand this is going to be the one additionally my opponent is his chips are literally in a pile they're not even stacked like he couldn't even stack the chips so against this person i think it's time to just just call down and hope that you caught him but when i do call my opponent has trouble flipping over his hand but the one card i can see is the ten of clubs what are you doing i'm burying you you're waking the neighbors no. shut up no which is gonna be good enough and when he finally flips the other one it is the six of clubs as well so gets there on the straight and the flush and everything and i just can't catch freaking break today luckily on the next hold and bomb pot the player to my direct right had pocket kings and the top board came out king king top board qualifies for high hand and that player won a thousand dollars so congrats to that guy as well as uh winning the entire bomb pot as kings were good on the bottom board as well congratulations canada following that with an under the gun straddle there are two limps i raised to 35 dollars with ace eight of spades the under the gun straddler decides to fold and one of the limpers decides to jam for about 200 dollars when the other player folds this opponent had actually been a very action player someone who will happily get in like six four off suit when they just feel like jamming their smaller stack in there so i'm happy to give this particular player action happy to give action in general at my own meetup games so for 200 bucks eight eight of spades will be good enough for a run I called the $200 and my opponent had ace jack of hearts so we're gonna need some help we agreed to run it twice 
first board no help but luckily not even a single spade out there so plenty of flush draws plenty of eights to hit on the second board i end up turning open-ended but cannot complete there either so we are down another 200 dollars we're on probably our fourth or fifth buy-in at this point not a great start or middle but maybe we can end on a high note on this hand i look down at queen four of diamonds again play a little bit wider at the meetup games try to mix it up and have some fun very expensive fun early position makes it twenty dollars there's two callers i'm in the big blind gonna defend the queen four for 20 bucks so i make the call and the flop is pretty magical it's ace three four with two diamonds so pair with a decent kicker and a flush draw is gonna be good enough for me it's just the preflop aggressor who bets 45 dollars pretty happy to just call here see what develops maybe i can hit one of my draws one time not on the turn though the turn is the nine of spades so we're heads up on this turn card when i check my opponent makes it 60 dollars thinking i have a ton of equity here could possibly get an ace to fold because the sequential bets that are not really geometric they're kind of smaller sizes typically feign some weakness trying to get closer to showdown try not to put too much money in the middle and we're gonna charge him i make it 260 dollars large raise here trying to get folds out of aces middling pocket pairs maybe five six we'll just let it go and i can win a hand otherwise when called queen should be good four should be good diamond should be good let's see it when my opponent counts out the call puts it in there pretty easy jam on any of those cards but we get a black five of clubs sorry but please don't so we whiff this one as well not ideal i decide not to rip my last 400 bucks in there as a bluff seems somewhat suicidal i feel like my hand just looks like miss diamonds at that point so or miss spades i feel like an ace is just gonna muster up the call this particular player been calling pretty light throughout the whole session so not sure he's the one that i'm even gonna go for it against when i check it back he has ace 10 with the 10 of diamonds ace of spades so not particularly the hand you should have called the the turn with probably not a river call as well but you know we'll never know maybe i should have fired that third bullet and just went for it but not today on a final hand of note cutoff makes it ten dollars the button calls i'm in the small blind with ace 10 off suit i raised to fifty dollars gonna go big with this one trying to get something to happen well the cutoff and the button calls we end up going three ways to a flop of 10 7 5 rainbow well we have top pair top kicker no one should really have jacks or plus because they didn't four bet and they raised to ten dollars just called my hand should be good here so as usual i'll bet about half pot with top pair good kicker for 75 dollars the cutoff is the only caller we are heads up to a turn card which is the seven of spades not my favorite but we're gonna bet a second time my opponent really shouldn't have called with a seven if he was I'm still ahead of hands like 8, 9, 5, 6, jack 9, jack 8. Maybe just a random ace X that didn't feel like folding. Wanted to peel with their overcards. So I continue for $160 on the turn. My opponent makes the call again, and the river is the queen of clubs. I checked to my opponent who snap jams all in. Why wouldn't he? I only have $200 left in my stack. Probably did this sizing to myself here, but I do think that my opponent does have bluffs. 8, 9, 5, 6. Plenty of ace x overcards, ace jack, ace king. And additionally, it's a meetup game. People are trying to get the best of me here. They're trying to show bluffs and make the vlog. So, gotta keep them honest in some spots. This is gonna be one of those spots I make the call. And my opponent, of course, has 7 5 off suit. So, clearly, just not my day today. It's over. I am into the game for $3,000, out of the game for zero, nothing, not a single chip, which across eight hours is approximately $375 an hour or 125 big blinds an hour. Yes, a cool 1,000 big blinds going to my opponents on this meetup game. Yeah, as you can see in one of the corners of the screen, I will now be tracking all my stats on the Bink app. Could be a fun little addition to the channel. All of you can sit by and see how long it takes me to get out this $3,000 hole. Additionally, if you're looking for a new app to track your results, if you click the link in the description below, you can get 25% off a year subscription to this site. It is definitely important to track your stats if you don't have an app or software that does it already. Now with this discount, this might be the best chance to start doing it. In terms of results, it's obviously disappointing to drop 3K, but if I'm ever going to lose, I'm happy to do it at my own meetup game. You know, give some money to quote unquote the fans, 
one, two people taking shots, people who are there to play with me. Happy to give action to those players and, you know, we can get it back on the two five streets in just a few sessions pretty easily. I do think that I ran quite bad. I missed my open-ended straight flush while other people hit theirs. Just running into over pairs consistently is going to be expensive. You know, top pair, good kicker, and over pairs seems to be the theme of the day, and that's going to be expensive. So my next video will cover a 5-5-10-20 game I play with Matt Berkey. <laughs> Definitely going to be a fun one. Be on the lookout for that, and I will see you on the next one.